so that you know i can demonstrate to you visually how this entire thing is actually working remember so, we just said that ct currently had zero rows now after pass one they has two new rows hey guys welcome back to our channel this channel every data science is all about trying to learn various concepts of data science by practicing a lot of questions this video is in continuation of the advanced sql 50 series where we are trying to solve 50 advanced sql problems on topics like select basic joins basic aggregate functions sorting and grouping advanced select and join sub queries and advanced topics like window functions and common table expressions in this video we are going to solve this question called all people report to the given manager and try to learn from it so yeah let's jump right in so this is the 47th video of the series called all people report to the given manager and if you look at the company this question has been asked in so adobe and google let's look at what the question has to say we are given a table called employees with three different columns employee id employee name and manager id employee id is the column of unique values for this table each row of this table indicates that the employee with id employee id and the name employee name reports his work to his or her direct manager with manager id the head of the company is the employee with employee id equal to one we are asked to write a solution to find employee id of all employees that directly or indirectly report their work to the head of the company the indirect relation between managers will not exceed three managers as the company is small order of the result does not matter okay let's go through this example so here we have various records of employees, their employee ID, name and manager ID in the employees table. So let's look at what all employees directly or indirectly report to the boss. If we look at it, right? So employee ID 3 is a manager of itself and does not report to boss. So 3 should not be in the output. 2 reports directly to 1. So 2 should be in the output. 4 reports to 2 and 2 reports to 1. So indirectly 4 reports to 1. So 4 should also be in the output. 7 reports to 4, 4 reports to 2, 2 reports to 1, so 7 should also be in the output, 8 reports to 3, but 3 does not report to 1, so 8 should not be in the output, similarly for 9, and 77 directly reports to 1, so 2, 4, 7, and 77 are the ones that we need in our output. Now, since the question mentioned that the indirect relation between managers will not exceed 3 managers, you can take two routes to solve this question. The first is using self joins, which we are not going to do, but just want to mention it here. So what you can do is you can join the table on itself twice so that you can get maximum th third level of manager and then you keep certain rows. But let's learn about how to do this using recursive common table expression. Because if this statement was not mentioned, so you do not know that up to what depth level this can go. So it would be better to learn about recursive common table expression. So we learned about normal common table expressions until now. But let's look at how a recursive common table expression is written. So to write a recursive common table expression, you need to add the word recursive after the with clause. So a normal common table expression is with common table expression as and then whatever you write in parentheses and then you simply do select star from common table expression, right? So this is the normal syntax. But if you want to write a recursive common table expression, you need to add, okay, recursive common table expression as and then whatever you need. Now in this, what you need to have is Firstly, you need to have an anchor member, right? So there is something called anchor member and then using union or union all, right? You can have one of the two depending upon the type of question and whatever you required in our output union all you need to union this with something that we call recursive member. Okay, so now following this, let's try to solve this question so i've just copied this in excel so that everything is at one place so that you know i can demonstrate to you visually how this entire thing is actually working so this is the table that we have employees employee id employee name and manager id this is the query that i have written so there is this is the anchor member that from this table called employees keep only those rows where manager id equal to one basically the person is the boss and employee id is not equal to one so that we ignore rows like this Okay, so this becomes your anchor. Then this is the recursive part that, hey, from this employees table aliased as E, inner join the common table expression aliased as C on E dot manager ID. So manager ID is equal to employee ID column that we get from the common table expression. So now this, these are the two 
members that we have anchor member as well as recursive member now let's look at how this is actually solving this question let me just copy and paste this entire thing back into my sql query okay so this is how this looks now let's try to see how this is actually working so we have written with recursive common table expression as so this entire thing right so let me just read this entire thing actually will give you two rows right so the first pass is this is going to give you employee id 2 and 77 because that is the only time so here manager id is equal to 1 and employee id is not equal to 1 similarly in this one so you are returned with 2 and 77 now what is the recursive member in the recursive member what do we have we have from this employee tables join a inner join so basically the rows should be present in both of them common table expression cte now right now cte has nothing right because this is just the first pass so this entire thing is going to produce you how many rows zero rows so it you have nothing here and then you union it right so here you have the union function union function so here you have two rows here you return zero rows so two rows plus union zero rows you are returned with two different rows so yeah two new rows are added to the common table expression remember we just said that ct currently had zero rows now after pass one they has two new rows okay so now this is what common table expression ct stores then in the second pass what happens is it again goes okay return employee id from employees where manager id equal to one and employee id not equal to one so again this will produce the same two rows now since the common table expression has these two new rows 2 and 77 it will try to find okay we are performing an inner join of the employees table so employees table basically it will try to say if you have 2 or 77 in the manager id so you do not have 77 but you do have 2 so with 2 it will find a match and it will return e dot employee id that is employees employee id so it will return 4 right so here recursive member is going to return you 4 so now this is you have from the anchor member this is what you have from the recursive member you union them so you get 277 and 4 so this is another new row that has been added now again this entire thing becomes your common table expression cte now pass 3 again the anchor member is producing the same thing but now since you have 277 and 4 so 2 already we saw that it produces 4 77 there it won't produce anything because there is no 77 in the manager id but 4 will produce another row called 7 so here you have 4 and 7 and you when you union these two members you get 2 77 4 and 7 so here again you are ending up with a new row so at the end of pass 3 common table expression has 2 77 4 and 7 stored in it now again pass 4 anchor member produces the same thing but if you look at it, right, so 2, 77, 4 and 7. So 2 produces 4, 4 produces 7, 77 does not produce anything because here you have an inner join. Remember, it is an inner join. 77 did not produce anything. Similarly, 7 also do not produce anything because manager ID is not 7. What are the two rows that it will produce? 4 from manager ID 2 and 7 from manager ID 4. So it will produce the same thing that it produced in pass 3. So no new row is added. So when a no new row is added to the existing common table expression, the common table expression terminates. So at the end of pass 4, CTE will store this 2, 77, 4 and 7. These are all the employee IDs who are actually reporting directly or indirectly to the boss. So if I go back here, right now after all the passes it will have only one column right this common table expression will have only one column called employee id so if i return everything from it if i go ahead and run this let's see what do we get so if you look at it this is accepted our output is same as expected output let me go ahead and submit it to pass all the test cases so this is accepted and this is how to do it so yes tricky question plus we had to you know use the recursive common table expressions in this what we basically learned about recursive common table expression is that you need to have two members joined by a union or a union all the first member is called an anchor member and then second member is a recursive member which actually keeps on adding one or more rows 
to your common table expression and the moment it will not add any new row it will stop executing it is something just like a while loop that we study and then once it terminates you can return whatever you require from your common table expression so yeah this is how we do it let me know if there's a better way or more efficient way to solve this question let the solution be in the comment section below and i'll see you guys in the next video